Hello together and welcome back to the Velodict channel. In this video I'm going to show you the process of a conversion from my 26 inch retro mountain bike, the giant boulder, uh, towards a one by gravel bike, so to speak. So in this video I'm going to guide you through this process from where I started to what I've came up in the in the end and I hope you will enjoy it. So stick around, hang on and let's continue. So the main idea or the initial idea I had on this project was the question whether or not it is possible to convert a 26 inch mountain bike uh, to a yeah, reasonable um, gravel bike, so to speak. And this was kind of the uh, root idea of this whole project. I, for myself, had to define personal key features initially what is a gravel bike for me and what I have to achieve in order to uh, convert my mountain bike to a gravel bike. Two features were important for me. It was like the drop bars, an essential point of a gravel bike for me, and also a modern reasonable gearing. So I thought about um, yeah, more gears, um, a different ratio and so on. And potentially as an option going one by. Also a key component which was in my interest was the um, friendliness of the budget. So I thought most of the parts um, I go for the budget option and at best I would go for uh, used parts. Drop bars, modern gearing, optional would be one by drivetrain and also budget friendly. Starting with the baseline. So what we have as a crude component and from where we're starting. Starting with the gearing, the bike, my uh, giant boulder is equipped with a 3x7 drivetrain. So we have three chain rings in the front and a um, seven speed cassette in the rear. And the gearing was in the front 22, 32 and 42. And in the back it was a seven speed cassette with 11 to 28. As you can see, the gearing is quite broad. We have a uh, a range of 486%. Uh, but what you also can see is that you have a lot of overlap. Um, you can achieve uh, similar gears uh, to which you can also achieve with 32 and 42 in the front. Means you carry around a lot of gears uh, that are redundant. The uh, positive aspect is that you can uh, choose a better chain line. In terms of cockpit, um, my Giant has a very narrow um, flat bar, mountain bike bar, um, and the clamp diameter is 22.2, and also we had a quilt stem. Coming to my main considerations, how to address all those issues. In terms of gearing, there were the, um, the considerations I had, I had to take, which gear ratios I wanna, want to have. This mainly uh, is dependent on the cassette in the rear. So there you have to pick your option and also in front the chain ring as well. So these are the two um, points of movement you can vary in order to achieve your desired gear ratios. Then of course the, the amount of speeds. So uh, what kind of cassette you want to have? We we started from a 7-speed cassette and nowadays it's possible to have a 13-speed cassette. Campagnolo Eka, that's out of my budget option, but still though it's possible. And I decided to go with a 11-speed cassette. That was my choice in that regard. Then of course um, a 7-speed hub or a 7-speed cassette uh, goes on a specific rear hub and 11-speed hubs usually um, differ in a certain way because a 7-speed cassette 
is not that broad or doesn't need that that, spa that much space as a uh, modern 11-speed uh, cassette, for instance. Um, then, yeah, of course, the chain ring, as I told you before, the second uh, degree of movement, I can um, pick my gear ratios. So this was also the consideration to, yeah, deal with um, my spider, my crank, my um, BCD. So what bolts I have, what bolt diameter I have, or what is the availability for that in terms of chain ring? Do I want to go one by, two by? Do I need narrow white chain rings in that regard? All that stuff um, I would have to take in consideration in the further steps. Considerations in terms of shifting and the whole cockpit situation. I wanted to have drop bars. So usually gravel bikes have then the drop bars and the respective drop bar shift and brake levers. Nowadays, uh, electronic shifting and hydraulic braking is increasingly popular, but still that's obviously no option. I have rim brakes and also that's quite expensive. So <laughs> obviously I thought I would go mechanical braking, of course, and mechanical shifting also, of course, but if you take a look, um, there is very few options in that regard. If you want to have extra wide mountain bike range uh, gear ratios uh, paired with mechanical dropper type shifters. So that was no option. There are some watches out there, but still they uh, rely on very expensive drop brake and shift levers. So that was no option. That also included then the decision to go with a flat bar shifter, very standard mountain bike shifter setup, and all the issues that come with that, more on that also later. So that's the main considerations when we're talking about shifting and uh, cockpit situation. In terms of gearing, I decided to go with the 11-speed uh, solution, and I took a look in the internet, what can I go with a mountain bike a uh, drivetrain that's not too expensive, yet very reliable. And I opted for the Diora ecosystem. It's quite reliable cassette. It was the 11 to 51 cassette. And I would need uh, a new freewheel body because um, the seven speed freewheel body uh, from the initial bike uh, wouldn't accommodate or uh, fit after all uh, the um, new 11 speed cassette the um, spacing issue was yeah a big point in the whole thing because imagine uh, from 7 to 11 uh, you have four more gears and you need a little bit more space on the dry side so in order to accommodate the cassette you have to push the wheel hub a little bit uh, outbound uh, away from the drive side so then the cassette will fit with the new free hub body. But to compensate the shift away from the drive side, you would have to uh, redish the rim that it's again in the center of the rear triangle. New cassette, new free wheel hub and dish the uh, rear wheel again. With the help of the Ritze Rechner, I uh, plotted my setup or my desired setup uh, going with the 11 to 51 uh, rear cassette paired with a 38 front chain ring. You have also a very uh, broad gearing of 464%. Um, that's a little bit less than what we could have could achieve with the uh, three by seven setup. Still, though, we could um, mainly cover the entire range. Uh, from the lowest to the highest sprocket. Here's a direct comparison of the old setup in the, in the top. And then you have the new setup in the bottom. In terms of lower gear, we could achieve a, a lower gear uh, in the new setup. So we have a uh, ratio of 0.745. Initially, we had a, a ratio of 0.786. And when we go to the uh, back end uh, on the fast side, we can achieve um, 40 kilometers per hour uh, with a yeah, gear ratio of 3.45 as opposed to a um, gear ratio of 3.82 in the old setup. So the old setup was better in this regard. 
Now that we have talked about uh, the whole gearing and we set up the drivetrain, yeah, at the end have to shift the drivetrain from the cockpit. Hardware-wise, I went for a drop bar handlebar attached to a regular uh, stem and the stem was attached to a quilt stem adapter. When it came to shifting, it got a little bit confusing and also difficult. So I told you I went go uh, I went with the MTB type uh, flat bar shifters, but the subsequent issue is that those clamps from the MTB shifters are made for MTB handlebars, and the clamp diameter of those handlebars are usually 22.2 millimeters, as opposed to road bike um, diameter, which is 31.2. Eight, at least at the clamp and I wanted to place it there on the top bar section. How to cope with this situation? I came to the solution to use a front derailleur clamp from a usual um, round tube frame. This tube also has a diameter of 31.8 millimeters. I ordered one of those clamps where I thought maybe I can attach that with a little bit of fiddling and messing around, I managed to attach the mountain bike trigger shifter to my 31.8 millimeter drop bar handlebar. Summing up the expenses. And if you take a look at this spreadsheet right here, as we can see, the cassette was the most expensive item right here, followed by the rear derailleur, the chain and the chain ring. I used a lot of the um, Dioro ecosystem, as I told you before, mostly from the 5100 tier. Then I also needed some, some ancillary products. The Freehub body also, um, coincidental, is a Dioro. Then, yes, the, um, the, the, the quill adapter and minor things like the chainring bolt in order to uh, yeah, fit the chainring onto my existing spider. And this was a 38 tooth chainring with a narrow white um, profile and 104 millimeters of BCD. This all adds up. As you can see, I spent in total roughly around 250 euros. Let's have a little recap on the things that are very nice and also the things that are not so nice. Starting with the things that are not so nice on this um, build. Shifting and braking is not in the same place. So it's segregated from each other. I have the shifting on the drop bars and I have the braking on the, um, on the hoods. This is quite unfortunate, of course, um, considering the pricing and the watching, it's totally reasonable but it's also a safety issue. Yes, the brake performance wasn't that great in the first place, but better than it is now because I can, um, I can process way more force um, on my flat bar section with the uh, regular um, mountain bike um, brakes as opposed to the now uh, installed setup, um, especially from above. The braking is quite weak, I have to admit. And the whole setup, as I told you before, shifting and braking is not in the same position. And for me, this makes the bike less um, raceable, so to speak. I've been on my mountain bike on several uh, rides with um, friends uh, where we kind of went very hard. And in this instance, you really have to be uh, very cautious to to stay in line, to brake and to change gears very rapidly. And on the flat bar section, you can brake, concentrate, shift all at once. Now I cannot do that. I either have to be in the um, drops or in the hoods, um, have control of brakes so I can maintain my distance to the front person, um, such things like that or in technical sessions, I need to be on the brakes, but I also want to shift. It's not that far, but you have to change it. And that's that's what I meant with um, it's less raceable. As I told you before, it's quite expensive. 250 euros, that's quite a bit. For, for the outcome, I think, yeah, I don't know. This is very individual, but I think 250 euros is quite a bit. Coming to the good things, okay, the shifting is ex extraordinary. I mean, I, I praised the Dior ecosystem uh, already. 
Shimano is such a good, reliable brand and also um, the lower tier components, for instance, Diora, uh, the shifting is really crisp and uh, I don't want to miss it again. The whole drivetrain is so smooth. Um, there's no friction at all. So far, I didn't uh, have any um, chain drop. So this means for me, the clutch mechanism from the um, rear derailleur works um, good. And also the um, narrow white chain ring in the front does a perfect job. Of course, the looks of the bike, it looks quite nice, I have to say. At least for my taste, nobody else has such a bike or very few people. So it's very unique. And for that alone, uh, it was worth the conversion, of course. Um, and then back to the invest. I told you it's uh, 250 euros quite a bit, but put it in context. Can you buy a bike for that? No. Can you convert a bike and make it better in the, in the yeah, or upgrade it and have fun? Yes, you can. Um, of course, I have uh, fun um, to to modify bikes, to alter bikes and to make the conversion. You have to have the motivation for that and also the skills, of course. Uh, but considering all that, 250 euro is a okay figure and you cannot buy a gravel bike for that. That's already it uh, from my side. I hope you found that a little bit useful. If so, I would uh, be very grateful if you uh, give this video a thumbs up. Maybe you want to comment on this video. Um, the question to you is, uh, did you even plan to do such conversion or um, what is your take on this bike? Other than that, I would also be very grateful if you would uh, subscribe to the channel. This will help me a lot and motivate me to do further videos, technical videos, vlogs, etc. Thank you for watching again. We will see us in another video. Be addicted. Cheers.